have the extreme privilege of being one of the first people in the creative process when a film's being made. What I'll do is come in and sit down with Gore and he'll describe scenes, characters, and it's usually something that um, needs to be developed and, and conceptualized because it doesn't exist in our world. Maybe this look and this could be combined, you know, so that it's, it's he's holding this with, you know, with the right hand. Pirates 1 had the cursed pirates, the skeletons. In 2, one of the first things that he said was, you know, we got to come up with the new curse. And one day he had scribbled a little, little drawing. It was just like a little pirate with a clamshell in his eye. And he goes, I'm thinking like this. Like, what if they were just kind of living on the bottom of the ocean all this time? Initially, you know, when, we're, when I was designing these characters, it was just kind of a conglomeration of, you know, shells and mollusks and, and uh, sea anemones. We realized that we had to kind of start focusing on one element to really make these characters stand out individually. It's funny, you, you, you look at the expanse of the ocean, you think, oh my gosh, there's just millions of ideas, but there are only a few really good ideas, <laughs> you know? A jellyfish head guy didn't quite work, you know, and sea slug face actually made it in, I think. I like sea an enemy mouth guy. Goes, blah, 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 blah. What did he say? There's something. <laughs> the challenge becomes, how do you integrate you know, certain elements into it and still make it look cool and not make it look like something goofy. So it was kind of matching the fish or, or a creature to the body type and, and personality. You really didn't want to lose that human aspect because they were once people. And if they become too fish-like, then they just become too creaturey and, and you stop believing that they were an actual human being. the hammerhead guy, even though, you know, it's got a hammerhead, you know, head, the rest of the body still has that human aspect. To the captain's cover! The puffer fish guy, you know, just half of his face is, is part of that fish, and the rest of his body, you know, was a lot of looking at Howard Pyle kind of paintings and that keeping the costume integral to what was going on and to the character as well. When we first started designing and, and talking about the cursed crew, um, Gore said, you know, we got to come up with the captain of this, this crew and the ship. And that was a very intimidating, you know, thought because we knew he had to be bigger and command much more, you know, uh, attention and power than the rest of these guys we were designing. I am the sea. One of the uh, crew guys I'd come up with had some tentacles coming off of his chin. And Gore said, oh, that's kind of cool. It looks kind of like, like a beard or something. And immediately I thought of Blackbeard and, you know, how intimidating that guy looks with this big, giant beard and, this, you know, just this attitude. And an image popped into my mind. I said, I got it. I, I know. I know what it is. And I went home, and this was the drawing I'd done. Everything kind of fell into place, you know, giving him kind of a peg leg with a crab leg and, you know, well, one crab claw that he could kind of grab somebody with. Even the hat is kind of a different hat. It's got like horns, you know, devilish. Everything about him referenced something classic about a pirate captain. Gore looked at the piece and he was just like, oh, he, he was sucked into it. He just goes, man, that, that's the captain of the ship. Full bore and into the outfit! You could see him at the bow of the ship, you know, and the wind blowing his coat and it's, it became more than just a study. It became really who this character was. I cannot be summoned like some mongrel pop. I feel real blessed to be able to have a job and do what it is that I love to do. To me, it's a privilege. Anytime an artist can make a living at doing their art, when you get to work with someone like Gore, it does become an emotional experience. And you feel like you're a part of something that is going to be around for a very long time. So there's planks, you know, you know, I don't know, play with it, play with it a little bit. Even though it's just a movie, you know, it means everything to me. And the pride I feel when I see an actual drawing, you know, projected on screen, the way I drew it initially is just, it's the biggest form of compliment you could possibly ever get.